Hello, I'm Jim and welcome to my shop. Greetings from Rock Springs, Wyoming. Well, it's finally warmed up. The stove's starting to melt out and things are turning green here in the high desert. I welcome you again to my YouTube channel. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Uh, keep subscribing if you like these videos and it'll keep you updated through the YouTube network when new videos are coming out. This evening's topic for, uh, for us as wood turners is chuck maintenance. And I'm going to be going over maintenance of uh, the scroll chucks, the typical scroll chucks that we use, uh, whether you're using a Vic Mark or a One Way or a Sorby, a Record, a Nova, a PSI uh, from Penn State. They, they all have basically the same construction and they do require some maintenance. That maintenance typically consists of a good inspection and a good cleaning and a light lubrication. So we're going to be looking at those and we'll show you how to take these various chucks apart and maybe some hints and tricks involved in that. Now this is my way of doing it. There are many ways to do this. Maybe you have your favorite way, but this is a way that has worked for me for a long time. It's given me good service. The chucks have lasted well uh, and, and they do their job. I encourage you to always remember that safety in my shop is my concern and safety in your shop is your concern. That being said, a couple safety tips and hints before we get in to the chucks themselves. In this video I'm going to be using compressed air from an air compressor. You can use uh, a blast off can or those little spray cans. Uh, but I want to encourage you never to place this air hose against your skin or any part of your skin or a friend's skin and mash that compressed air release lever. This can be very dangerous causing severe injury. Please, please be careful with compressed air. When you are working with compressed air and you're blowing out this stuff, please wear safety glasses at the very least so that you don't get blowback into your eyes and and cause, uh, we only get one set of these, so let's take care of them, our eyes I mean. Also, you'll need a couple uh, sort of special tools. One of those being a set of snap ring pliers. These are for what's called outside snap rings. When you press the handles together, squeeze the handles together, you'll notice the tips push apart, quite opposite from what a regular pair of pliers do that you also need a pair of needle nose pliers. When you squeeze the handles together on these, the tips go together. The snap ring pliers are necessary, so you can take these chucks apart. A good stiff brush of some kind, you can pick these up at auto parts stores. Here's one that's a gun cleaning brush. and It's a nice stiff nylon. You don't need metal brushes for this, uh, just these, or even the old standby, the used toothbrush. Also a couple picks or awls or some other kind of thing. I've got a couple here that have a couple different tips on them uh, so that we can get into and help lift these snap rings out. Now let me show you the chucks we're going to be working on this evening. First is a Barracuda PSI chuck. This is a chuck style that is used with the Tommy bars, two Tommy bars to tighten it. And, uh, and we'll be starting out with it. It's maybe the simplest of the scroll chucks. Next we're going to uh, move to the Nova, uh, the little Nova G3. It's a very popular wood turning chuck. Uh, works with a chuck key into the geared box and it has an open back. Next we're going to be looking at the Record SC4. This is one of the larger records. It's very similar, similar to the Nova Titan II. Uh, it too is a scroll chuck operating with an Allen key and has a closed back with an indexing ring. Let me give you a hint. If you haven't bought a chuck yet and you're going to buy a chuck, go ahead and go ahead and go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and spend the difference in the money and get an insert style chuck. The insert changes out and you can readily use the same chuck on a variety of lathes just by changing out the threaded insert. Uh, take my word for that, it's worth the money. And then we're going to take a real quick look at a collet chuck. This is a particular kind of chuck. 
It's a very low maintenance chuck. This one happens to be one from Craft Supply. It's an apprentice collet chuck. The bill chuck is uh, similar to this. All of your collet chucks from machine shop applications to wood turning are all similar in style. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, take some chucks apart. I have to thank my granddaughter Trinity. She is my uh, camera operator for this evening. We're going to start with the uh, PSI chuck, uh, the Barracuda chuck. And I want to remind you, go ahead and remove your chuck jaws so that you just have the chuck, the faceplate area. Now turn the chuck until it closes, till the bars, the chuck slides are all the way together, and then open them just a little bit. Now for this chuck, we'll just turn it over. You're going to see a large snap ring located here. Lay it on a flat, good, hard, steady surface. And I recommend that you get your snap ring pliers ready and insert your finger into this hole, resting these two fingers on the side. Put your snap ring pliers in and spread the snap ring and begin sliding it up off of the shaft. Now the reason I tell you to keep your finger in the center of the chuck, this keeps you from losing the snap ring should it pop off the snap ring pliers. It is spring steel, it's a hardened steel and it's a special steel and believe me if it comes off the end of the snap ring pliers it's going to go flying across the shop. Once you've removed the snap ring on this style chuck it's just a simple matter of lifting the back off of this chuck. Now I want you to, to be very careful as you're working on your chucks to keep everything in the same place from which it started. These are machined and they're machined particularly to fit in the particular guides and slides of the chuck. Once you've removed the chuck you're going to notice a area that looks like a maze or a screwed area and this is what advances and retracts those chucks. You want to check it for damage and wearing, clean it brush it off with the brush, clean it with the compressed air, blow it out, lay it aside, pick this up, put your hand on it so that it holds those chuck jaws and then turn it over. Now you can lay it down and one jaw at a time, remove it, inspect it, clean it, and reinstall it. Once you've done that all the way around the chuck, it's now ready for a light lubrication. Put your hand back on the chuck, turn it over, and lay it back down on the flat surface. Be sure that you orient these four chuck jaws, push them to the center, not cram them to the center, but just push them to the center. Once you've done that, use some kind of a dry lubricant. It's going to go on wet but it'll dry and it'll leave a nice dry film. Uh, there are many products out there, uh, but if you use an oil or a grease, then of course the sawdust and other things and debris tend to stick to it. Uh, just spray it lightly. And remember these things uh, need to be used in a well ventilated area. Spray your chuck jaw areas. The area around the chuck where the jaw is going to work and then the spring. Now comes the trick <clears throat> to putting it back together. Set this on top. You're going to notice there's a gap. Now turn it back and forth gently and when it lines up you'll fall into place. Now turn it over holding it together and be sure that it works as it should. Now we're ready to reinstall the snap ring, hold it tight, turn it over, lay your snap ring, again finger in the hole, these two fingers holding the snap ring, snap ring pliers, be sure they're in the snap ring good, spread it using those two outer fingers, and push it down over the shaft. Once it's down over the shaft, you can take uh, almost anything. This is a nice little plastic brush. I've still got my finger close and over the hole. And now I'll just take and slide it down. 
And remember, if you're using a dry lube, the snap ring, of course, it's called a snap ring, you heard it, snap in. Be sure it's in, be sure to give it a visual look. Check your chuck again for proper operation. Now, this is called a dry lube, and it does go on wet. So it takes a little while for the carriers to evaporate out and leave the dry loop. So once you've got that done, we're ready to set it aside. Now let's take a look at the Nova G3. This is the G3D, which is a reversing chuck. It has a grub screw in it to tighten down on your spindle. It's the same way. Take your chuck key, insert it in, turn it until the chuck jaws are touching, and back it off just a little. Turn the chuck upside down. Now if you're going to take one of these apart, I warn you, this one is a little more difficult. It's going to be really hard for her to let you see exactly what's going on. But the snap ring on the Nova Chuck is down inside of where the geared teeth that the chuck wrench are at. But we're going to go ahead and take that out. <coughs> we will insert the chuck the uh, snap ring pliers and again on this one it's really kind of hard to keep your finger in the center because you're going to need two hands. I don't know if she's able to get this but I've got the 90 degree piece of uh, carrier and I'm just going to work it under the edge of the snap ring where it is out and I'm going to slowly come around this And again, like I said earlier, this is one of the hardest chucks to take a, to get the snap ring off of. Just take your time. Uh, don't get too frustrated with it. If you do, uh, just uh, maybe put it down and uh, go get a cup of coffee and come back in a few minutes. And uh, just keep working this around until the snap ring works itself up and out of the chuck body. Okay, now that we've got this snap ring and we've, we're working around this collar, again, just be patient, slip it up, and then put your finger in the hole and take the snap ring out. Once we've got that done, uh, we're now ready to put our hand on the chuck again, and we're going to put our hand on this side, and we're going to turn the chuck up. When we do that, this ring is going to come out. You'll notice that this ring looks almost like the one that in did in the PSI. Look at it, check it for wearing damage. Uh, I like to take this one and brush it to the outside. And then I'll take a rag, a paper towel or whatever, and I'll wipe this area in here and in here. I do want to warn you that as you're wiping these areas, be careful. Uh, some of these chucks have got little uh, wired, er, wiry edges on them, uh, and they can really uh, stick you pretty good. So once you've kind of got that nice and cleaned, it's time to do this chuck, and we've turned it back over. It's face up, and it is just like the other one. You'll just take it apart one piece at a time, wipe it down, clean it out, inspect it for excessive wear, then put it back in. Turn it, do the same thing, checking for wear, cleaning out the areas. It really hasn't been that long since I did this, if you're uh, noticing. I'm going to suspect that when we get to the record in a minute, we'll find that uh, it needs a little more work than these other ones do because I was turning some really uh, dirty green wood with it the other day. So now we put this back together, we're ready to uh, reassemble our chuck, again pushing these jaws to the center, having removed them, cleaned them one at a time, we turn it over, lay it on its face, I'm going to wipe this area out inside just a little bit, we're going to add the dry loop here, 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 and here, all four areas, and around the edge. We're going to put just a little in here. We're going to drop this back in. 
Before we put our snap ring on, we've got to get this collar lined up. The easiest way to do that is to take your chuck key. It's not going to line up with the hole yet. And just turn that collar until it does line up. And when it does line up, you'll be able to see now that the snap ring will go in. At this point, you can hold the gear with two fingers. And you can actually work that gear with your two fingers to verify that all of your jaws are working like they should. Get the snap ring. Wipe it off. Just like we did on the PSI, we take our chuck, our uh, snap ring pliers, chuck on its face, finger in the hole, expand it, slide it down over the shaft of the chuck. Again, we'll take the little plastic brush and we'll push the snap ring in. And on this SC, on this uh, Nova chuck, push the ends with the holes down first. And then push the back of the snap ring in. You'll hear it snap in place. Now take your chuck wrench and spin your chuck. And again, remember you've used a dry lubricant with a wet carrier. So now we move over to the Record Power SC4. And this one is a little different. <coughs> There's a small grub screw in here that uh, holds the insert in. On this chuck, in order to get this back off, you have to remove this small grub screw that's in here. This again uh, holds the insert in, so you want to lay it aside. Now, just like the other two chucks, you have a snap ring that's located on the inside. We'll get a little sawdust out of here. Now we may even just blow this out real quick. It's usually the fastest way to get rid of sawdust. Be sure you have on some safety glasses of some kind and blow it away from you and away from others. Finger in the hole. Snap ring pliers to the ready. Now you're going to put, your, put these in. And just like the other ones, we're going to lift it off the shaft. Lay it aside. Now here's what I kind of like to do with these. You'll see two holes. I take the snap ring pliers and just lift this plastic housing out. It's a little more complicated. You're going to notice when you get it apart that you've got two gears that are where the Allen wrench goes in. Again, we want to look and be sure to turn our jaws to the center. And you can look down through the spindle hole on the uh, chucks and you'll see that that's, uh, they're coming together. Now, remove these. Lay them aside. Now, we'll do the same thing that we did on the Nova. Hold our hands. We'll turn it over. Same thing's going to happen. The ring's going to fall out. You're going to have the teeth, looks just like the little Nova did. Take these out one at a time, clean them, and reinstall them. Once they're cleaned and everything's wiped down, it's actually pretty clean. Again, place your hand back on top. Turn your chuck. Be sure that your chuck jaws are all toward the center. We want to just drop this back in carefully. You can actually put your fingers through the holes for the uh, chuck handle and just take your finger and run in there until it goes down and seats. When it does, you'll notice that your chuck jaws move. These go right back in to the sides of the chuck. One, two, You may have to use your Allen wrench to get them to line up with the T. Let me give you a little better picture of the inside of this one if we can get it. You'll notice how they come in from each side. I'm hopeful because it will fall out. Your ring is there. Chuck jaws are almost to the center and closed. Now we lay it back down. This is oriented 
with the groove over each of those chuck geared push it in it'll seat snap ring once again thumb and middle finger index finger in the hole snap ring pliers holding a little pressure with your center finger and your thumb expand the snap ring push it down over the collar little plastic toothbrush again and on this SC4 once you get it down a little ways you're going to have to expand it because there's a shoulder where that uh, insert goes in so you're going to have to expand it a little more hold a little pressure on it with your finger and now just work yourself around the snap ring and snap ring is in don't forget to replace the little grub screw that holds it in and there's going to be a little leather or felt washer that's going to be in that uh, in one of those holes and uh, I never seem to remember which hole it's in so I just kinda have a look you can see it down in there tighten it up don't grit your teeth that'll be too tight take it easy now let's check our chuck for operation Again, we're going to wipe it off and you lubricate it just like you did the others. Again, this one wasn't too bad and, and uh, so I just uh, let, it, let it go for now as far as lubing it up. I try to take these chucks apart depending on the hours of use. If you're a weekend turner, hobby turner, probably once every three or four months is enough. And now let's look at a collet chuck real quick. Uh, and this is a really good chuck. Uh, those wood turners who have them. I know a little bit about them. One of the major things to do on a collet chuck is to keep this inside very clean uh, and lightly lubricated so that it does not rust. This is almost like a Morris taper. It works on the back side of the collets. And uh, the collets have a taper just like a Morris taper and they're going to go into this and as you tighten this big nut it's going to push down and close these up so this needs to be very very clean and very lightly lubricated lightly lubricated the same is true with the threads keep them clean and lightly lubricated take an air hose from time to time and blow these alternated relief cuts out be sure they're clean blown out and that will do it for the collet chuck and that's the simple way to uh, maintain your scroll chucks uh, regardless of the manufacturer of the scroll chucks uh, the basic assembly disassembly is the same but it is important that you look at inspect and determine that your chucks are in good shape again this is Jim from Rock Springs Wyoming Thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel and please consider subscribing if you would please. Thank you and God bless and safe turning.